Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and this is going to be the third video in this Express Sodas build with Mongo. So in the first video we set up our Mongo and we got our connection nice and tested. In the second video we set up our Express, we have our server nice and tested, now let's start to put everything together. Okay, bottom line is generally the always sort of the process of building out these things is always going to be kind of actually go in that order, models, views, controllers, in the sense that I need a model, I need a data source where all my data is going to be. I need views, I need like a, a template of what the user's visual is going to be, and then I need controllers that kind of put all that stuff together in my routes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start building our soda. So we're going to go to mo models, and we're going to create a new file called soda.js. Okay, and that is going to have our um, soda model. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import the connection. So again, we in our connection file, we exported Mongoose. I'm going to want to import that here. Why not just import Mongoose directly? Well, the nice thing about importing it from connection is that that version of Mongoose already is connected to the database. So in that case, by using that, I'm establishing my database connection. Okay, so I'm going to const Mongoose equals uh, require uh, dot slash connection. Okay, wonderful. Cool, that brings in the connection, and that's pretty much, I think, all I really need. Okay, so now, first thing we want to do is whenever we create a model in Mongoose, first we need to define, like, what does a soda look like? That's referred to as schema, soda schema. The definition or shape of the data type. Okay, like, any, any data of the type soda looks like what? Okay, so we're going to say const, const, soda schema equals mongoose dot actually a new mongoose dot schema and that mongoose schema um, will be you know be made up of the following properties okay so I'm creating a new schema object so schema is a class and I'm creating a new instance of that schema class which basically is a blueprint for what a mongoose object should look like. In this case, I want to say every soda has a name, which is a string. Okay, you know, if I want to get more detailed, I can actually make this an object and say, you know, the type is of string, and hey, it has to have a name. It's required. So, and there's other options you can do, like you know, like unique. Does unique have to be true? You can create like different validation rules. There's like a lot of stuff you can do in that object. I'm not gonna. You can read the mongoose documentation. To learn more about how you would do that. But type string required true, then there's gonna be a color of the soda, okay, which we'll just say it's a string again. And then there's going to be ready to sell. Like is the soda ready to sell? And that's gonna be a Boolean. Okay, as a second argument, we can pass it in this object that has some extra settings. Main thing we care about is timestamps. Which just means that in addition to my schema, it's also going to have a created at field that has a that has like the, the specific time of when this particular soda was created, and an updated at field, which will be a timestamp of the last time that soda was changed, because you might want that data for different reasons. So I always like to have it. So there's my schema. Okay. So basically, that's my blueprint. That's my contract saying, you know, whenever we work with a soda. That's what a soda looks like. Okay, it has these properties: name, color, ready to sell, and name is required. It has to have a name. Can't not have a name. Okay. Then what we can do is we create our soda model, which is going to be our interface with the database for sodas. Meaning, whenever we want to add a soda, delete a soda, we do it using the model. Okay, the model object. Okay, that's why we refer to Mongoose as an ODM, an object document manager, allows you to manage the documents in your database using an object. Okay, it's basically using object oriented patterns to help you work, interact with your database. Okay, instead of you just sending like raw database queries. You can do that, but again, probably for most programmers, it's just more intuitive to work with an object with functions. So we'll say const soda, usually you always name your model like whatever the name of the model is singular so one soda is soda 
it's generally going to be uppercase. That's generally the, the naming convention. Like It's the same naming convention as it is for classes. Okay? In the same way, a class would be singular and plural, a model singular and plural. Because we, it's not a thing. It's a definition of a category of things. And that's always singular capital. Okay, so it equals mongoose.model. And this model function will create our model. First, we have to give it a name, so soda. That's going to determine what the name of the collection is in the database. And then we have to say, okay, hey, whenever I decide to add things to this model, what schema should be used to enforce like what it should look like? And that's going to be the soda schema that we created. And then that's that. We now have a model. Okay, so now we're going to export the soda model. Okay, and yeah, export the soda model and what do I want to do? Oh, module.exports equals soda. Okay, now that's good. Okay. Cool. Actually, what I'll do is I'll do a push there. So, created soda model. Okay, so that's now up. So, now next, what I want to do is I'm going to head over to the controllers and we're going to make a controller. The reason being is that we want to create like what's, we want to create, we're going to start being able to write routes. Okay, so the way we're going to do is we generally, I create a controller or a router for each model. Okay, so, so all the soda routes are going to be in the soda router. Uh, let's say we had a blog, it would be all the blog routes would be in the blog router and so forth. So, new file, soda.js. So you'll see like there's a file, there's going to be a soda in models views controllers. And that's how I, how I know, like we're dealing with the soda feature of the app, then we look at the soda files. If we're dealing with the blog feature of the app, we're dealing with the blog files. It's all about organization. You know, I know where the, I know what models views controllers means, and I know that, okay, for this model, I'm going to look for the file with that model's name in the corresponding folder that handles that part of the feature. And that just makes it easy to split everything up and organize it in a way that many developers on a team can work efficiently. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in express. So const express equals require express. And we're going to bring in our model, cons soda equals require dot dot slash model slash soda. Okay, then we're going to create our router. So cons router lowercase equals express dot dot router uppercase. And that's going to create a router object, which is kind of like a sub app in a sense. Not exactly because there actually is an idea of a sub app in Express, but it kind of works the same way. So I can register routes with router in the same way I could register routes with app. Okay, so then we're going to have all our routes here. Okay, and then we're going to have um, We're going to have all of our routes there, and then here we're going to export the router. So module.exports equals router. And generally here in my routes, I would just kind of create like different routes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a seed route. And what a seed route is, just it's just a route to put some data, arbitrary data in the database. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create app dot not route router dot get. I'm going to call this slash seed. And I'm going to want to. What happens is that anytime I'm going to use the soda model, the soda functions they are async. Uh, they're asynchronous, meaning um, they return a promise. So there's going to be three ways I can handle that asynchronicity with mongoose. I can either pass a callback which is not what I'm going to do in this video. If you want to see how you would pass a callback, um, then I would watch my Mongoose Masterclass video. Uh, you could use a dot .then. If you want to see how to do that, check out the Mongoose Masterclass video. I'm going to use a sync await. I just find that to be sort of like the nicest, cleanest way of doing it. Okay. Now, here we go. So what I'm going to do is 
say async. So we're passing an async function, rec res. So again, that async keyword means that this function is asynchronous, which is going to allow me to use the await keyword, which is essentially pauses the function anytime I'm using an asynchronous function. So that way it'll wait for that function to finish um, or that promise to resolve before it moves on to the rest of the function. So what I want to do in this case is that generally whenever I hit the seed route, I want to just delete my database. Okay? Um, because basically it's going to be like a reset button. So uh, what I want to do is go in there and take soda dot uh, I think it's dot remove. Is it remove? Yeah, dot remove. And I'm going to remove everything. Okay, so what this is going to do is going to remove everything. But again, this is asynchronous. So I want to pause the function so it finishes. So I use the await keyword. So that'll wait for that command to finish before it moves on. Then what I'm going to want to do is I want to add some stuff. So I want to say const sodas equals, because I want to want the result. I do want to save the results of this. Um, so I want to say await soda dot create. And so the create function can either receive one object, that's one soda, or it can receive an array of objects, that's many sodas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass an array, and we're going to pass in like two or three sodas. So name orange soda, okay, uh, name orange soda, color orange, ready to sell, true. Okay, and let me just do that two more times. So we're going to say cola, let's say black, um, root beer, brown. Okay, so what that's going to do is that it's going to create these sodas in the database, it's going to wait till it's finished. And then what happens is this function returns the array of sodas that were just created. So I'm going to have those array of sodas in this variable. And then at the end, I'm just going to res. Just so that way I can see it in the browser and confirm that this happened, I'm going to return the array of sodas as JSON. Okay? Cool. Now, before I can actually use this route, I have to register this router with my application. So I'm going to head over to server.js. Okay? And then here are my routes and routers. I'm going to register the router. So app.use, and then for any route that slash soda, I wanted to use the, so in that case, it's going to be slash soda slash seed, because the router is being registered with the slash soda prefix. So slash soda, and then I'm going to say, hey, I want to use the soda router, which we haven't defined yet. I got to actually import that. So const soda router equals require and then I'm going to import the thing that I exported from the soda route, the so the soda controller. Okay? So just to kind of understand how this all connects, we're going to run server.js. server.js imports the controller file, which imports the model file, which imports the connection file. So all the files are going to be run. Um they're because they're all connected. At least every file is at least being imported by one of the other files. Okay, so now let me try this out. npm run dev. Okay, and see we, we are connected to Mongo and the server is listening. Wonderful. So now theoretically, if I go to localhost, to my browser, looks like my browser is frozen. Hmm. Do I need to close the browser? I guess so. Let's reopen it. Okay, localhost 3033 slash soda slash seed. Because again, slash soda, because when I registered the router, I said this router only works with slash soda. And then the route itself in the router defines slash seed. So it's slash soda slash seed. And there you go. And see, we, we see uh, that it actually happened because we can see that an ID was a unique ID was created for each soda. Now, if I refresh this, it's going to do it again, which means it's going to delete the sodas and then remake them. So you're going to see they're going to have different ID numbers. So take a look very carefully right now at the ID numbers. Like, look at one very carefully, and then we we'll refresh it, and you should see the ID numbers change. 
and you see the ID numbers change, and so do the timestamps. So this is this route is literally a reset button. So generally, I would not have this. Like I would, when you deploy your application, I would get rid of this route, or I would comment out this route, so that way users don't accidentally reset your database. But it's very useful when you're in development uh, to be able to just seed your database when you need to. So I'm going to leave it at that for this video. So I'm going to do one more commit. See, uh, pushy um, soda model and seed route added. Okay, origin main, and I'll see you all in the next video.